So at this point, we're talking about setup. So we want to get our workstation set up appropriately so that we can do everything we need while still having our equipment handy. So the first thing we're going to need to do is have a place to hang our torch and clamp our ground to the table so that the table acts as a receiving for the electron flow for the entire welding circuit that is the process and magic of us welding things. Okay. So it helps if you have a torch clamp. Please don't hang the torch across your lap. That's how you get shocked. So, got your ground, electrons want to flow here. Always make sure that's on the table. And then you got your torch, okay? So you can hang this anywhere. If you've got a bench vise, you can put it in the bench vise. If you have um, a hook, that works too. But don't lay it across your lap. That's how you burn through your pants. That's how you scald yourself. That's how you shock yourself. And we want to avoid all that, okay? So we've got this cool tool called the torch clamp. It's just a, basically a U-bar welded onto a pair of vice grips that you can squeeze onto your table. And if it's a little loose, you're gonna wanna tighten the back knob of the vice grips so that it clamps firmly. So it should lock right in place. We'll do that in the field view of the camera. So here we have our torch clamp. And here we have our ground. And now we can hang our torch. So before we get started, it's important to make sure you have a couple of things handy before we put on all the safety gear. By the time you're done, you're going to feel like an astronaut because you're wearing a thick leather jacket or canvas jacket with a welding helmet and a solar cell that's just going to basically block out everything you have in your field of view. So we have magnets ready. That allows us to position our work like so. And then we have our welper pliers that allows us to cut our wire to length. Okay, so one thing you want to know is when you have your wire here, when you have the open face of the pliers facing the cup, you can cut that to length every time. This is how far away you want to be, right? This distance from here to here, how far away you want to be on your metal every time you weld. So you're going to maintain that position the entire time. But the welpers have a lot of versatility incorporated to them. So a lot of time people want to buy like a pair of clippers or nippers and those work fine, but these do a lot of things at once. So the first thing they do is they've got this wide grip here that allows you to pull the brass head off the MIG welder, okay? And that's important because this little nozzle is where the argon is going to flow out to protect your metal from burning, okay? And so the nice part about the welpers is the tips of the pliers are designed to seat in the cup of the welder and clear out all the excess gunk from the interior of that head. So it should look nice and shiny. So you got like a clean, shiny brass interior and that allows all of your argon to flow smoothly. Now as you're welding, slag will build up on that interior. So if you're welding for like an hour straight, it's good to just Take a minute, take the cup off, clean out the tip, make sure that's good, and then address the nozzle as well, okay? So you've got this little copper bit here, and it's coated in dust and dirt and debris, but if you wipe it down, it'll start to look shiny, okay? And that's just a consumable. It unscrews. And so back to the welpers, this little part here allows you to grab the copper and gently unscrew the copper head. Okay, this is the electrode. This is where the electricity is flowing from the electrode to your wire, right? So the wire becomes a consumable in your process. So from there, what you wanna do is make sure that the wire is flowing smoothly and that there's nothing on this copper tip that's limiting the wire from coming out. You just screw that back in and then before you put this cup back on, you wanna make sure that it's not hot. Okay. Once you got that done, you're ready to go. All you have to do is make sure your machine is plugged in, crucial step, and then for this particular MIG welder, the people who designed it thought, you know, the on switch on the front was so elegant, uh, we're gonna get rid of that, and so they hid it in the very back of the machine. But when we turn it on, you'll hear the fan come on. So the on switch is on the back here, and now, the fan is running, okay? So at this point, when you go to squeeze the MIG wire trigger gun, 
you're going to see wire automatically heat out. Okay? And that's important because we set that with our voltage to 5.5 and our wire speed to 55. And that means that this entire length, right, this is way too far away to be welding. But when we stick it to the table, right, we need to be a certain distance away. So at this point, we're going to talk about what happens when we flow electricity through that wire on the grounded table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it to the table and apply 5.5 volts to the wire to show you what's happening during the welding process. Okay. So you see that wire lighting up? That is the electrical resistance of the wire. Okay. The interesting, about, interesting thing about welding is when you're welding, the spark of the electrons jumping through the air is what's hot enough to melt the wire. Okay. So if you're ever trying to consider how your welding is working, you're never actually touching the surface. You're always floating above and this electrical spark is just pouring a hose of melted wire and it's just dropping onto your welding surface. Okay.